everyone and welcome back to another episode of by me Dee Dee. if you're new here hi hello and welcome it is great to have you here on damp canada i like to cover all the lesser known murder mystery and mayhem cases that go on here in canada and canada only so if that's something that you're interested in i hope i see you around again today's video is going to be an extremely lesser known uh, missing person mystery that some people in the area don't even know about I came across this case while I was doing my research for the Megan Pilon video because this case takes place about a month after her disappearance. And although I read maybe one or two articles on the case and I did think it was odd, I never really went back to it to dig a little deeper. But just recently, this case was brought to my attention again as a requested video. And since it's been requested, it's obviously still on people's minds. So today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Carrie Cadeau, who seemed to have simply vanished without any trace at all. I always like to give a backstory to the person missing so that me and you all watching can have a more personal connection with them. And of course, with cases in general, I like to give as much info as I possibly can. That being said, there is very little to no information on Carrie Cadeau or who he was as a person on the internet. And his case in general has almost no coverage or updates even though he will be missing for 10 years next year. So that is the reason this video may seem vague, but just know that I did my best to try and gather as much information to bring you as possible. Carrie Cadeau's full name is Jack Carrie Cadeau, but he went by Carrie and that's the name that people know him by. Carrie was born in 1972 in the small little town of Chelmsford, Ontario, which is about 20 to 30 minutes away from Sudbury, Ontario. And even though it's about 20, 30 minutes away, it's still part of the greater Sudbury district. He grew up and lived in Chelmsford all his life. And Chelmsford is basically like cottage country. There's tons of spots to go fishing, camping, hiking, um, hunting, all that stuff. It's a very awesome area to live, in my opinion. By November of 2013, Carrie had a wife named Tanya and he had two sons and a daughter who were all minors at the time of this case and so their names are undisclosed and because one of them is still underage, I won't be disclosing any information whatsoever on the family or speaking about them at all. Also, they have never spoken out publicly about Carrie or his disappearance and so there really isn't much to talk about. On Tuesday, November 12th at 11 p.m., Carrie was last seen at his home. It's never been stated who actually seen him last, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that it was his wife, but that is just an assumption on my part. The next day on Wednesday, November 13th, no one had seen Carrie and his family started to get concerned. Now, I do want to point out that this little time period is a little confusing, at least to me anyways. The reports say he was last seen on November 12th at around 11 p.m. at his home and that he likely left his home on foot. And from that wording, I would assume that no one actually seen him leave his home on foot or at all. The only thing that I can think is being like assumed by the family and by the police, um, that makes sense to me anyways, is that he was last seen at 11 p.m. on the 12th and he was possibly gone from the home before anybody woke up on the 13th. And so maybe that's why it's assumed that he had left on foot. Um, there was never a description that he left his car or if he had a vehicle or anything like that. Um, but yeah, but maybe that's why they think he left on foot. I don't know. This is all just speculation on my part. This case is very vague. There is a short description of what he was likely wearing at the time, which was a fleece lined hoodie, a black toque and rubber boots. And again, I'm going to assume it's because those specific clothing items weren't found in the home or at all. And maybe that's what he wore all the time. Once again, just another assumption. Now I did look up the temperatures of the night that Carrie had apparently left his home in, on foot, the night of November 12th, and it was listed at being negative 11 degrees. And the day of November 13th, it only reached a high of, I believe between one to three degrees. I believe the three degrees was actually later on in the evening of uh, November 13th. I also want to point out that the Sudbury area also usually has a decent wind chill which can knock down the temperature another five degrees or usually more. So these temperatures are 
not temperatures that Carrie would be able to withstand for an extended amount of time, just being in a fleece-lined hoodie and rubber boots if he was out in the elements. Hypothermia can happen at even five degrees. But I didn't ever see this mentioned, and so I just thought I would look into it and bring it up just in case anyone else had it crossed their minds. Anyways, Carrie was scheduled to work the night shift that night of the 13th at his job at William Day, but he never showed up to work, which was very out of character for him. His family became even more concerned after this, and so they reported Carrie as missing to the Greater Sudbury Police. I'm not sure if they reported him missing on the 13th or on the 14th, but on November 14th till November 20th, an extensive search was done for Carrie. The Sudbury Police, along with the North Shore Search and Rescue Team and K-9 units, were all dispatched out to Chelmsford area, and the OPP helicopter was also assisting with the search. At some point while this search was taking place, apparently on social media, there were rumors going around that Carrie had been found, which was not true at all, and could be very damaging to a missing person's case. This can deter people from sharing posts or helping with the search in general, or even spreading the awareness. But with absolutely no signs of Carrie, the search was suspended on November 20th. On November 28th, the police called for assistance from hunters in the area to keep a lookout for Carrie or anything that seemed out of the ordinary. And then later on, at some point down the road, I'm not sure exactly when, there was another search that took place, with searchers going to an undisclosed area. It is common to not disclose searching slash searched areas to the public in order to not compromise anything in a case. Unfortunately, there had been a large forest fire in the area before the search was able to take place, and so this search, of course, resulted in zero results. Now, of course, this fire could have possibly been on purpose, but just to play devil's advocate, the Sudbury area is susceptible to forest fires during the summertime, and so if this was when the search was taking place, it's very possible that it actually was from just one of these forest fires, even though it is suspicious. There of course has been a lot of speculation to what has happened to Carrie. Some people believe that Carrie just got up and left one day and left his whole family and life behind to start a new one somewhere, which I guess yes is possible. It's not totally unheard of. He was a grown adult after all and he could have just got up and left if he really wanted to, as shitty as that would have been. But just to play devil's advocate again, if he really didn't want to be found by family or friends, he could have confirmed with the police that he is alive so that he would have been removed from missing persons databases and things like that, which would take away from people looking for him and also it would take away from people like me making videos like these which he hasn't done. But I also do understand that not a lot of people know that they can do this, where the police don't have to notify your family of where you are. Of course, if you're like of age and stuff. And of course, some people believe something more sinister has taken place, which is what I tend to lean towards. And I think in my opinion, this is what the police believe as well. The police haven't made any statements or given any updates on Carrie Cadeau's disappearance in recent years, but they have said police investigation to date cannot rule out the possibility that Carrie Cadeau has been a victim of foul play due to the duration of time since he went missing. Carrie was 41 years old at the time of his disappearance, and so he would be turning 50 years old this year. He is described as a white male and is around 5 foot 4. Carrie has a more thin build and was around 134 pounds when last seen. He has black hair, although he did have his head shaved and was said to have had an unshaven scruffy appearance, which I assume was directed towards his beard. And he has brown eyes and his left eyebrow was pierced with a barbell. He also has both ears and nipples pierced. He also has a few distinct tattoos. He had his children's faces tattooed in the middle of his back, 
which I read that and I was like, damn, bro, you're like, you're insane. That's wild. Portrait tattoos scare the hell out of me. <laughs> he also has a tattoo located on his right forearm of angel wings with black and gray scripture. He also has a tattoo on the back of his neck of a Chinese symbol. He has a tribal tattoo on his left bicep and on his left arm, he has a Chinese symbol with the words Tanya and Carrie since 1994. It's reported that he was likely wearing a black fleece lined hoodie with blue and gray print on the front, a black fitted toque and rubber boots when he went missing. If you have any information on the disappearance of Carrie Cadeau, you can contact the Greater Sudbury Police at 705-675-9171, extension 2300, reference case number m 13 s U one three zero five two one nine one, or you can contact Crime Stoppers by phone at seven zero five two 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 tips eight four seven seven, or one eight hundred two 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 tips eight four seven seven. You can also submit an online tip to SudburyCrimeStoppers dot com or CanadianCrimeStoppers dot org slash tips. You can also send an email to the National Center for Missing Persons and Unidentified Remains at Canada's Missing Disparu Canada at rcmp grc.gc.ca. And that is basically all the information I have been able to gather for you all. But of course, don't take my word on things. Do your own research and come to your own conclusions. I always have my sources in the description box down below. But I'd love to hear what you guys think about Carrie's disappearance. Do you have any suspicions? Have you heard about this case before? What are your thoughts and feelings? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say and I'd love to get a conversation going and maybe spread more awareness about this case so that maybe we can get answers. Honestly, like the things that I question most at this time are particularly like the night of November 13th. Like, when did he leave? Where did he go? How do you know that he left on foot? Um, or left uh, willingly? It's, I just have a lot of thoughts about this case. And I also question why this case hasn't been kept up with or really mentioned at all in the media since. There seemed to have been a really extensive search done for Carrie, which we don't really see as often as we would like. And so it is a little surprising to me that the police haven't even made any requests from the public or anything like that. There are obviously still people wanting answers for this case. And so why is there a freakishly low amount of public talk on it? I mean, I did like hours of just searching the internet for any little ounce of information. And it is very frustrating when you have so many questions and just so little answers. With this little talk about it, I do wonder if people are maybe scared to talk about the case or bring it up at all. But in my opinion, if it's not talked about, we are never gonna get answers. And if people are scared to talk about Carrie's disappearance, that means there are definitely answers to be uncovered, in my opinion anyways. The truth always comes out eventually, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not in 10 years from now, but cases get solved 40 years plus later. And so I do always try to hold out a little hope that maybe somebody that knows the right information or was involved will get tired of living with that secret and do the right thing. And yes, I do know that is wishful thinking, but that's all I can do. Anyways, that is all I'm going to say. I hope you guys got something out of today's video. If you did, you can give me a little thumbs up Rooney. And if you want to subscribe and want to hear more about lesser known murder mystery and man cases that go on here in Canada and Canada only, sub, do it, do it, do it, do it. I do try to post at least once a week. I was off for about a month because my schedule had changed and I was getting used to my new routine, but whatever. Stay super safe out there. If you're in an area that actually is experiencing spring, please enjoy it for me. It is currently snowing outside. Bye.